Oh, hi guys. All right, so I um, I did this edit a while back, and I wanted to go back and do a video because everybody's putting videos up this this uh, this week. So I'm just gonna go back and kind of show you what my layers were and uh, how I did them. So uh, just to let you know, I'm using Photoshop CS5 and a Wacom. Uh, this thing is I, I actually can't do anything without it anymore. Um, I've been using them for years and years and years, and I can't live without them. All right, so first thing I do is, you know, you open up the image in Camera Raw. Uh, first thing I always do with every image is enable the uh, lens profile correction because, you know, we have it there. Why not use it? Sometimes I find that I, I'll click it, and I won't like what it does, so I'll take it off. But most of the times I usually leave it on. Um, the other thing I did is I did a couple of little minor tweaks to the image. Uh, I changed the white balance to daylight. I added just a tad bit of exposure, 0.05. Um, I bumped up the blacks to about 16, just because I wanted to pump it up a little bit. Um, brightness is 50. Contrast, I put to 45. And I added a little clarity. So that's pretty much all I do in Camera Raw. I just tend to go very simple when I get it in my raw file. Sometimes if I'm doing it just in Lightroom, I'll do a lot more work, but since this I was going to bring into Photoshop, um, I decided that I would do most of the work in Photoshop. All right, so we click OK. That'll bring us back into that smart object. It'll update my file. All right, so the first thing I did to her um, was, if you look down here on her strap right here, um, these two little polka dots, I'm, I'm guessing her dress or her bra, whatever that is, um, had polka dot, white polka dots on it, and it was kind of distracting to me. So the first thing I did is I cloned those out, got rid of that. Um, next thing I did, I really wanted to go into her skin, and uh, I'm sure she's young, <laughs> beautiful, but young. Um, she's got a couple of little, like, acne scars and some some holes that we can get rid of um, just to clean up her skin a little bit. So I did, I used the healing brush a little bit. Um, I used a healing brush and I would heal on her and so this is what this layer did before and after you know just cleaning up her face just a little bit nothing nothing major um, next anytime I'm doing a serious portrait retouching I add a little bit of makeup a little bit of like airbrushed makeup just just to smooth out her skins because if, if you see some of these tones there's there's some you know darkness spots and you know just some regular kind of everybody has you know, skin spots, and uh, you don't really notice it until you're really close up on an image. And um, I do a lot of movie poster work, so we get to do, we uh, end up doing a lot of very big, big uh, faces, so we have to make sure they look really good. So um, I always add a makeup layer just to clean it up. I mean, if you look at back and forth, it really just kind of um, smooths out the skin. And that's something I tend to do a lot. Uh, next, I wanted to bring out the red in her mouth a little bit, so I used a curve and added a little bit of red, just a little bit of red in her lips, um, just to pump up that red in her lips, and just, you know, just to give it a little bit of, um, I don't know, I don't want to say lipstick or anything, but just, you know, just to pump up the reds. The eyes, she's got some very small little veins in her eyes that we can clean up a little bit, so I just, you know, you never want to get rid of everything it's, completely because it looks fake so you gotta go real subtle if you look at it it's super subtle what I did I just kind of cleaned up just a little bit of the whites of her eyes then I enhanced her eyes with a little bit of with a curve just to bring out the the uh, color in her eyes and the brightness now you'll you'll see right now if you look at that that move that I just made it looks like it was really extreme but I'll have some other layers up higher that um, We'll bring that back down, and, and this is just something that I've done for so long that I kind of know how far to take it. But if you go back right now and you and you turn it off and on, her eyes are just glowing, which is a little too much, but that'll come down. Um, next, I kind of worked on her teeth. She's got very small yellow stains, which is pretty amazing. She has absolutely perfect teeth. Um, so just kind of desaturated that yellow just a little bit, if you look in here. Um, Next, uh, something I love to do when a uh, girl's got kind of this, um, kind of this like uh, sandy, dark, not dark, blonde, just kind of, you know, not so light blonde hair. <laughs> if that makes any sense. You know, she's got a little bit of a sandy blonde. So just, I like to add a little bit of white, paint it in. Um, I use an airbrush 
just an airbrush and my layer basically is on overlay so when you overlay white it you know just kind of enhances the you know and and i just artistically add highlights here and there just where i feel like it needs you know just a little bit to, just to give that hair just a little bit of life next i always add um a high pass layer basically this layer is actually you duplicate your original layer and there's a filter under other called high pass and what high pass does is it it's kind of like clarity and sharpening in Lightroom except it basically you know, let me show you what it does if uh, that's kind of strange but that's because I have a mask on it okay so basically it creates this layer of it just sharpens you know kind of the edges and it gives you a real clean kind of sharp um, and then you put that on overlay um, and actually let me show you just how I did that so I can basically you take anything that you've done underneath it and I usually duplicate it and flatten that into one layer so you have this one layer that is exactly a representation of your image so far and then you go to filter um, high pass and uh, the amount varies depending on the size of the image but it's usually like two maybe three if you're feeling really like you want to punch it a lot but I usually end up going with two it's just something very subtle it's just to bring out that enhancements and if you see it, it takes the green and just that and when you when you put it on overlay in your layers palette um, you'll see that it just kind of sharpens everything a little bit look at her eye um, see it sharpens it it just like gives it that little bit of sharpening um, let me just throw that away and use my original layer which is the same thing but um, so when you put that on overlay it sharpens everything now you have to be very careful because it'll also sharpen all the pores in your skin and you don't want that so I always tend to mask out the skin to make sure the pores don't get sharpened um, and sometimes I'll add a second one at 50% opacity just to bring it up a little bit more that's what that is um, next thing I do is I like to use um, gradients a lot more than anything else I use gradient map is one of my just go to if you go if you go to just right here you go to gradient map um, and what I end up doing a lot is I do a lot of this this black and white luminosity black and white um, gradient map and that it's a great way to convert your images to black and white too but if you put that layer that that uh, black and white gradient map in a luminosity in your uh, blending modes it gives it just a little bit of punch it gives it that like I call it the, kind of like the Hollywood punch you know because we do it all the time when we're doing retouching for uh, celebrities and stuff and um, it just it just gives it's it's kind of like a contrast but it gives it a little bit of a, a nice glow to it so I tend to do that sometimes I'll do two so I did that um, I did this this uh, other gradient which is a gradient let me uh, and I use gradients on overlay a lot but let me uh, show you what this gradient looks like um, it's a gradient that I have saved in my presets um, I have quite a bit of gradients because I use them a lot but this is my gradient or, that I use to warm everything up and um, it's a nice yellow to orangey to reddish to black gradient and if you see what it does um, on normal this is what it would look like if I was doing a normal it was just a gradient map that's put over everything and it just will completely it's almost like a fire scene but um, I never use it like that uh, I always put an overlay to start off you know it'll it'll overlay on the colors and then I you know 5% 0.5% or no 0.5% 5% it's just it's just gonna a very hinting it's just a warm hint just ever so slightly um, the next thing I like to do is again I use a gradient map but this is a green gradient map and if you look at it here let me show you what it would look like if I did the whole thing um, this is on normal so it's basically a green gradient map and again I'm gonna go to this one I actually used on 10%. Basically, the only reason I'm doing this one is because I want to bring out the greens in that background. Um, so, see this background back here? I want to bring out the greens back there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, I use a mask to mask her out and mask this wall out. Um, sorry, I keep pointing to it with my hand. I should be pointing it to it with my uh, mouse cursor. Um, so, yeah, I just I masked her out. 
see if you look at this, you know, you just mask her out, make sure she's not getting any green, only the background's getting green to bring that out. Uh, let's see, what was this one? This layer, the next layer I did, um, oh, and this is a, a, a curve layer uh, where I'm going to increase the contrast just a little bit if you look at it. Um, I don't even know if it'll come up on the screen, but it's just an ever so slightly increasing this layer. If you look at how I did this, let me see if I can make this big somehow. Forget how to do some of these things sometimes. Um, expand view, okay, so. If you look at this curve, um, I just kind of lowered a little bit in the blacks. If you lower it too much, you'll notice it just like gives it that punch that uh, Jared loves, which I end up loving too, but I don't want to go that much. I just want to go just a little bit of punch in this one. Um, let me go back to regular view if I can remember how to do that. Expand view, okay, so. So that's that, and then one thing I did want to do um, this this area back here is a little distracting to me. Um, it's a little dark. I want it, I want to really focus on her face. So you know, in Lightroom you can use a vignette. Uh, I actually wanted to go light vignette instead of dark vignette. So in Photoshop I have all the power in the world. So I could just you know create a white gradient and just kind of make that kind of fade to white which is less distracting on this side over here and it really brings out her face. One thing I always, always add to all my images, um, and this is, this has to do more mostly because I do a lot of print work and in print work you always add a little bit of noise just to, to break up any um, splotches you might have or any lack of color and it'll just print better. Um, I always add a layer of noise um, on overlay. So basically the way I make these layers is you make a complete, actually, let me just do a, a one from scratch. You make a new layer. I always name my, na my, my layer, so I'll call it noise. Um, I will fill it, and if you hit the shift delete button, it brings up the fill dialog box, and I want to fill it with 50% gray. Now, you can do foreground color, background color, um, content aware when you have a chance, but I just want 50% gray, completely neutral. Okay, so it'll do that. And then I will add, uh, with my filters, I'll add some noise. Add noise. And again, this is, I always add monochromatic noise, just so it doesn't add any color, it just adds the noise. Um, also, depending on the resolution of your file, you'll notice how much noise and how much noise you need to add. I usually add, again, like 3% 3, 3 noise, maybe 2% noise. 3% um, looks good, so, you know, it'll just add a completely gray layer with noise on it. Um, and if you look at real close, you'll see this noise. It just breaks up a pattern. It just, it just, and then you put that on overlay, your layers palette, and it'll be hard to see, but I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to show you in her eyes. If I turn it off and on, you, you can barely tell that I'm adding noise, but it'll, it, it just kind of helps in the printing process. So, you know, if you're going to do it for the, for the web, you might not want to add some noise. I know a lot of people to get rid of a lot of noise i actually tend to like a little noise in my images so um and i think that's it i'm just gonna get rid of that new layer and leave the old one just so it stays the same um okay so overlay overlay okay so there you have it that is how i did this picture i think she looked great um i i always like to do it before and after just you know so i put all of my work on a in a folder called retouching and hey, don't ever do this with your clients because they will hate you for it. But uh, before and after um, really kind of shows the work you've done. So here we go. Before and after. Wow. Big change, even though it didn't need that much of a change. But here, let's go close. Before and after. Before and after. And that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to make the next one.